Hey, it's Mazzy, April Fool's Day, 2024. Craft, the craft of April. I want to show two records uh, coming out from Craft Recordings. One is for Record Store Day, and one is a new release reissue coming out, I believe, next week or later, at the end of this week, this Friday, actually, uh, from Craft Recordings. Now, I got these from Kraft. So, who's the fool? Uh, but I want to show these because I am doing a preview of uh, some Record Store Day jazz issues. That'll show up in the next day or two. That is a total separate video because you want to know how these records sound and if they're any good or not. Uh, so I'll talk about that. But I thought of listening uh, to these today back to back and they're so far apart these two releases couldn't be further apart and i friggin loved how they both sounded and i loved the music and the music first obviously but these sounded amazing and they couldn't be further apart so should i start with the intense one or the or the just the, those acoustic uh wonderful like just crisp uh guitar sounds. I'm going to start with that one. I did take the uh, hype and off one, but uh, I left it on this one for now. This is coming out on April 5th, which is a Friday, and this is a 1983 release that was originally on Sugar Hill Records, the very kind of a uh, new grass, blue grass label, one of the great uh, new grass acoustic folk country guitar players of all time, uh, Tony Rice. Uh, he passed away in the last couple of years. Unfortunate. What a great player. Uh, you know, played with so many players uh, crossing over into the rock bluegrass genre. Not playing rock, but playing obviously with Jerry Garcia and that whole group and David Grisman. Just wonderful records. And I could kick myself because when I did my 1995 Purge, I got rid of a lot of uh, these records thinking, ah, oh, the compact disc, including this one. I love this record. It's, it's so good. Now, this is a craft. Uh, it's not Records Store Day, so order it, pre-order it, whatever, because it's good. It's a wonderful sounding record. A lot of it is him alone. But... And this was recorded in Berkeley at 1750 Art Studios. I've been there many years ago. Uh, Art Studios in Berkeley. God, I don't even know if that's still around. Is it still around? And this was, of course, mastered by Kevin Gray at Coherent. And this is a stunningly beautiful record. Chris clean. You could turn this up and it's just really wonderful. There are some vocals uh, from Tony Rice and uh, Church Street Blues is a really wonderful record. Uh, you got the title song there. You got the Streets of London. You get One More Night by Bob Dylan on here. You have a Bill Monroe uh, Gold Rush and Any Old Time, the old tiny Jimmy Rogers song, the uh, the train uh, the train um, yodeling conductor. Yeah. But you also have Norman Blake's song. Now, Norman Blake is another artist who's played with Tony Rice. And again, another artist. I got rid of these records. How stupid. I think I have maybe two Norman Blake uh, collaborations uh, left. Uh, but the great, the whole new grass acoustic thing uh, that labels like Flying Fish and um, Sugar Hill did are just spectacular. And I assume a lot of this craft has, so I hope they continue with this because... The other Tony uh, Rice records go for some uh, some serious money these days. Uh, I found some in the Dizzy collection, and we sold them during one of the auctions. And, and they're pricey records, so I hope, Kraft, if you're watching, and I know you're watching because I told you to watch, I hope, hope you you put more of these records out. Another song I like on here is the, uh, one of my favorite songs is Last Thing on My Mind, which is uh, written by the folk singer Tom Paxton in the 1960s, and I believe that's the song that the heavy band, The Move, uh, does a heavy version of it on Shazam. Of course, that was with Roy Wood uh, and Bev Bevan and and uh, Carl Wayne before Jeff Lynne joined the group, before they morphed into uh, into ELO. See how I kind of digress? And the, there's a thread on everything, and this isn't even a whack-a-mole. This is just two records that I love that just happen to be the same label. I've been previewing jazz all the weekend, so uh, these two were uh, a departure for me. 
And then it closes out with Pride of Man, the song by Hamilton Camp, another folk singer, put some albums out. Uh, had a great uh, album with uh, Don Gibson, too, back in the 1960s. Hamilton Camp was an actor. He was on sitcoms in the 1970s as well. But that song, my garage band did, and uh, everyone who likes the sounds, the Summer of Love, San Francisco sounds, or that was actually from 1968, the debut album from the Quicksilver Messenger Service. The opening track was Pride of Man. Um, Turn around, go back down, back the way you came. What a great song. And that's the first time I heard it. I didn't hear the folk version until years later, but he does a really uh, wonderful version of this. So uh, Tony Rice, uh, the... Uh, Church Street Blues, coming out April 5th on Kraft Records. And here is the label, the Sugar Hill a Replica label. And you can see that ring light just in this beautiful black vinyl. Let's see if we can kind of do a circular motion there. Ooh, that's kind of cool, right? This is a record that's going to surprise some of my audiences, which I don't even know why. I don't show a lot of hardcore records. Uh, I do show punk. I show post-punk uh, I am that generation. I was 22, 23 years old when punk happened. So it's not just the music you you hear in high school that you're influenced by. But I didn't know about this group. I totally miss this group. And again, this is coming out for Record Store Day, uh, April 20th on Kraft Records. And this is the uh, sophomore effort. Why do they say effort? Like they're just trying. It's a sophomore record, right? They tried. They made a friggin' great record. This is at the drive-in in Casino Out. This is, oh boy, uh, emo, post-punk, post-hardcore records from this band from uh, Texas, the band from uh, Austin, Texas, and uh, their second album, and they're not around anymore. They've come and gone, but what I love about this record, first of all, it sounds fantastic. It is a loud record. It is an intense record, but the dynamics are really good. I don't know who cut it. I didn't, couldn't really see in the dead wax, but, you know, is that the main thing? But the lead singer I know of, because his name is uh, Cedric Bixler Zavala. He is the only constant member, I believe, of this group. But he is the lead singer and the, one of the founding members of Mars Volta. And um, my friend here... Uh, Michael, Poetry on Plastic, who's really into classical music, into this kind of emo, hardcore thing, really kind of pushed me to get into Mars Volta a couple years ago. And I just kind of missed the boat on them uh, early on. But the dynamics of this, intensity of this, emo is that emotional, hardcore stuff. I mean, we have to have the, the silly sub-genres of everything, but that whole really started in the hardcore scene, but the emo thing, really, you can adapt it to hardcore. You know, basically, singer-songwriters who are doing hardcore and punk music are emotional. Oh, God, they're just like little little flowers that that break under the emotional stress of these songs. I, I kid in a way, but what, what really hit me, every time I heard this, I mean, it's that, like in the bands like Jawbreaker, the archivist is someone who turned me on to Jawbreaker, who I finally saw 10 years ago for the first time. I missed them the first time around. They were even from San Francisco, right? Um, but his singing on this, uh, Cedric singing, reminds me of an intense Jason Molina uh, from... Um, Jason Molina from Songs Ohio. That and Jason Molina always has that fragile voice, like like he's gonna break down crying. And his stuff is so slow core and moody and dirge like. And and I just love that. The archivist turned me on to uh, uh, to Songs Ohio as well, like fifteen years ago. And I just love that. His voice has some of the same tones, except this stuff's explosive. If if basically uh, Jason Molina like was pumped up <laughs> on J on Jolt Cola or whatever you want to call it, and was really you know into the hardcore uh, post punk scene, it would sound like this. I'm just um, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, this is recorded in L. A. Uh, apparently uh, the label it was originally on is Fearless Records, and they were going under or didn't have the budget apparently. But then they uh, put this out. They helped supplement. And they didn't have enough time. But I think for a hardcore or a post-punk record, this has really good dynamics. There's some kind of, you know, 
softer things and then it kicks in gear sometimes and it just kick at it's a i'm not always one for colored vinyl and stuff but this is one a beautiful look at that oh my gosh i think it's great can we have the ring light please it's really beautiful so this is coming out on record store day i believe let's look at the hype sticker which i ripped off the, it's um, 6,500 copies worldwide. So if you're into uh, emo, hardcore, post-punk, this is excellent. Excellent. If Mazzy likes it, you know it's got to have something. Of course, some will say that's the, uh, totally the opposite. It might be too commercial, but it's not. But it is, there's some good hooks. And I, I just, I was surprised how good this record sounded, how fantastic it sounded. In Casino screams at you beats you into a pulp along with your conceptions of punk, chews you up and spits you out a newly formed individual. <laughs> I didn't think it was, I mean, that hardcore. There's definitely moments of hardcore stuff, but I've certainly seen a hardcore and, and especially post-punk punk bands that were more intense uh, than this. But I this, this succeeded beyond my wildest expectations. And as soon as we finish it, I'm going to go put this on again. It's Easter Sunday when I'm recording this, which is perfect for, like, there's a little kind of an Easter coloring in there, right? Let's, let's I mean, while I'm looking for the eggs, I'm going to pump this record up a little bit. So I just want to do an April Fool's uh, video uh, and for two records. And thank you, Kraft, for putting out things that are not only, only, only or always the obvious releases you're doing great stuff um i'm excited uh, with the jazz the, the bill evans it'll be in tomorrow or the next day whenever that uh video i already recorded uh, the jazz video record store day preview so check that out please and again uh, like and subscribe all those good things because it helps the channel doesn't everyone say that does it help the channel it gets more eyeballs on it and um i really like making these and uh pontificating and expressing just my one man's take on uh, some really cool music and great records. So thanks for watching, and thank you, Kraft, for sending me these albums. I do appreciate it, and I enjoy the music. I love the friggin' music. Mazzy loves you. See you next time.